morning, everybody. Um, just to talk a little bit, even before we get into the presentation here, um, Prince William has been uh, a very happy recipient of these uh, TLC grants. We've received five. Uh, this is our fifth one that we received that I'm going to talk about today. But they all kind of built up into each other. First, we, we received one for uh, looking at uh, sustainability at, 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 at our rail stations. And we looked at North Woodbridge in Prince William County. Uh, and then we looked at Harbor Station, which is a big development coming in that's uh, next to the water. That was our sec uh, We looked at that. And then we also looked at the BRAC impacts that would be created on Route 1 within, uh, Prince, uh, between uh, Stafford and, uh, and Fairfax County in Prince William County. And then we looked at another area in, uh, in Prince William County called Yorkshire, which is mostly uh, by Mana near Manassas, near the Fairfax border, which also serves as, as a center uh, for Prince William County. So finally, we were, we were thinking about this, and we thought to ourselves, well, you know, we're talking about all these centers. We're talking about all these, all these um, urban areas that we're talking about in Prince William County, which is obviously mostly known as a suburban setting and, and a nice house bedroom community for DC. But we said we can get these urban areas going. What, what's our next step? So our next step was to include these urban areas and to, and to incorporate these into our comprehensive plan. I think our first presenter there from Miami, uh, Anna, uh, said something that really caught my ear. He, she said uh, she put out things that she was encouraged, that she had been encouraging, but were not part of her plan. You know, so that's what Prince William County did this time around with our plan. We put out these centers of commerce and centers of community and decided to set it up in our plan so developers could come in and, and have some kind of template to create these urban settings in this suburban county. Uh, with that, we came up and, and asked the TLC program to help us out in recommending some street standards for these urban settings because it, in our, we have a, a document, our design construction manual only has streets for suburban areas. The sidewalks aren't really there, they're really wide streets, they're, you know, we have to meet all the VDOT standards so we do that and, and, and it really wasn't something that was a, of, of a good nature to, to set up these urban areas that we had been planning for. So with that, we got Roadside and Harwell are very well, well represented here today. <laughs> but we got Harwell, Roadside and Harwell to help us out uh, and, and determine and get these street standards together. So our board authorized uh, the grant, the, the TLC grant. We got the grant award, and, and, and uh, we took our policies that we, I just talked about in our comprehensive plan and let uh, Roadside know what we were doing and what we were trying to accomplish, uh, which was basically to get these done and put into our DCSM. But for this, we needed to do some close coordination with not only VDOT, because as a Virginia county, we have to get our roads accepted by VDOT, so we had to make sure that they were involved and that they would accept these street standards, but also to be included in our, in our zoning ordinance, our DCSM, and, our DCSM, and make sure that they were in our county documents as well. So we coordinated with our committees and we coordinated with our, our Trails and Blueways Committee, which looks at also some of these pedestrian, pedestrian standards. So here's a quick review of our, of our scope. I'm not going to get into it too much, but we, we looked at some recommendations. We corrected them. We took them out to our boards and to our committees. They gave us some recommendations, and we came back to them. Um, so why did we need to do this? Again, you know, we needed these tight, compact streets in Prince William County to, to, to highlight our, our activity centers and to make sure that these activity centers were developed correctly. We did need to meet those VDOT standards that I talked about and with new, the new secondary street acceptance requirements and, and with the new access management requirements, it becomes difficult to meet these VDOT standards, but we involved VDOT at the beginning of the process to make sure that these standards were going were gonna to be acceptable to them. Uh, again, pedestrian and bicycle mobility and compact streets uh, were our main goal. We looked at the complete street standards and that's what we mentioned in our comprehensive plan, so that's what we were looking for. Uh, our process, quickly going through that, is, is we, we took it to the committees. We, the roadside completed their research. They came out on a field visit with us. We went to all our proposed centers of commerce and centers of community around the county and took a look at them. I mean, one, maybe two are halfway developed. All the other ones, they saw a lot of fields. <laughs> they, saw a lot of, uh, they, they saw a lot of areas where there's potential. And they, and, and they kind of got a feel for where we were in Prince William County in our development process. Um, we created a, a new street typology with these activity centers and, and, and we wanted to include to make sure that it would fit within the right of ways that we were talking about, the, the street standards and, and the pedestrian standards that we wanted. And we wanted to, again, make sure that VDOT was involved in meeting with our committees. So we started talking and, and the first thing that Roadside came up with was letting us know these are the kind of streets we want to include 
in your DCSM. First, we want to include some mixed-use main streets, and they showed us how these would operate in, in an urban setting. Then some mixed-use uh, residential streets, which are a little different and have a little different component to it, and residential side streets, which basically got everybody around within the center. We looked at private residential alleys, to, a little network of alleys. Uh, we really don't have an alley standard in Prince William County, so this would be the first time we're doing this. And incorporating that into some, into some private mixed-use alleys that would include for commercial purposes, and the service drives. Then they gave us some examples of all over the country and outside the country sometimes of how these facilities can be incorporated within these kind of centers in the suburban area. And we got some of these examples there that you see on the screen. As well as some streetscape, pedestrian crosswalks, and, and then they showed us how all this could fit in a compact street width. And then finally, like I mentioned earlier, the complete street standard that we were looking for. What we finally did is we came up with these typical sections. We, we, we have right now about 10 of them. We're not really completed. We haven't completed our project yet. We're at the very last end of it. But we've got these typical sections. We've sent them to VDOT. We've sent them to our committees. They've reviewed them. We've taken a look at them. And we're starting to develop out of this. So you see the planning, the UFU standard, and the cross section. We're trying to see how all our choices are put together and what can be accepted, what would have to be private, what would have to be public, and move forward with these. Uh, in, in a later stage of our project, which as soon as Roadside finishes this planning aspect of it, we, the board has already taken an initiative and appropriated $70,000 more so the Department of Transportation can hire an engineering consultant to come in and give the final details of these standards to bring it in for initiation of a, a, a DCSM or Design Construction Standards Manual amendment to our, to our boards. We've also involved VDOT and they are, we're looking at them to guide us with what they've approved at Tyson's Corner with some urban standards there to let us allow, allow for these urban standards to apply to Prince William County. So we continue to work with VDOT, we continue to work with our committees, and we will continue to work with our board to finally get these standards into some of these documents and make sure that they can be used as we move forward in developing our centers of commerce and centers of community. Thank you very much.